the magic wand. Oh, Tom Thomas, how did you get here? It was a piece of cake. I just got this cool magic wand as a gift, see? Wow! There's no such thing as a magic wand. I don't believe you. You just wait. Any wish is the wand's command. Check it out. Today I want my school to be closed. Golden wish, Tadish! Tom Thomas, your teacher from school just gave me a call. She said your school has totally disappeared. How odd. So I'm not going to school? Well, how? Instead of school, we'll go to the park. Hooray! Real magic. Oh, it's so great. No, there's no magic. They're only illusions. I don't know what illusions are. It's when what we think we're seeing is not what is actually happening. <laughs> Have you ever seen a magician pull a rabbit out of an empty hat? Do you think it's magic? No, it is only an illusion. In reality, the rabbit's hidden inside the table that the magician puts his hat on. The lid of the hat is made with a secret hatch. And when the magician puts his arm inside the hat, he grabs the rabbit from the table below and ta-da! How every magic trick works may be a secret, but every illusion does have an explanation. I'm telling you, this wand's totally magical. Right now, I can make a rabbit appear out of this trash can for you. Golden Wish Tadish! Oh, that wasn't the idea. Looks like a dog to me. Wait, one more time. Golden Wish Tadish! Hmm. Golden Wish Tadish! Tom Thomas, will you cut it out? One Chusaka was already enough for us, and now there's three! <laughs> when you were so tiny. Tom Thomas, are you ready? Hey, why do we have three dogs all of a sudden? Oh, my word. <gasps> no! Why are you screaming? I was dreaming that someone had given me a magic wand. And then I had to make it big, see? And, and, and my mom saw you. That's awful. That would have made me scream. I wish I had a magic wand of my very own. We Fixies aren't ones to believe in magic, but we do believe in what humans can do, because humans often work wonders. For ages, flying in the sky seemed to be an impossible dream. But today, anyone can take off to the sky in an airplane. It used to be that humans thought that only magic could take them to the moon. But now astronauts have already walked on its surface. In fairy tales, people were able to see and talk to each other through a magic mirror. But today we have the internet and telephones we can use. Refrigerators, televisions, automobiles, computers. There are so many things that humans have created. Wondrous things that they used to only be able to dream about. Like a miracle from a fairy tale. A magic wand? Why do you need it? First, I'd skip school today. Tom Thomas, are you ready? I told you, we're going to the park. And what about school? I'll skip it? Hmm. 
Good joke. Could this be a dream too? No, it's just that today is Sunday, and that's the magic of it. <laughs> the electric train. Woo -woo. Suddenly, the Earth is attacked by an alien spaceship. If help arrives here on time, we'll be saved. Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> you don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago. But back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the Fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine. So you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. You can play choo-choo by yourself. And I will. Pew, 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 pew. Hmm. Hey, why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! No lick. Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad gonna be home soon? No, is something the matter? We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, it talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. But it looks like I found the brake. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. If the rails come apart, the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah. Yes. Hooray! The train's running. Way to go. So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer, when suddenly from out of the sky comes an alien spaceship.
Greetings to you, O people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! The stapler. Tom Thomas gets the ball. He makes an incredible move. He's wide open. The goalie sees him and he screams in horror. He shoots and scores! Yay! Tom Thomas, stop kicking that ball. Your school concert starts in 30 minutes and I don't want to iron your pants again. All right, Mom. Just one more time, huh? No, I'm sorry. Mom said I have to quit kicking the ball. But Mom said nothing about dribbling the ball. Go, you can Tom, do Tom, it. You can do it. Yeah. Go. Special concert pants. Ugh. Yeah, how will you go now? Well, your mom does have enough time to sew them. I'm scared to even tell her about it. She said that I had to stop playing. Hey, I've got it! Here! You think we should fix the rip in his pants with a stapler? Yeah, isn't it a good idea? Oh, I gotta try it out. You do. Like this? Stop! Why? What's wrong? Eh, my nose itches. That's all. Let's go. You're right, Nolik. It works. That is super. Yeah, the stapler's really great. Do you guys know how it works? Just keep stapling and I'll tell you. The staples for a stapler are lightly glued together. That way you can load many staples at once instead of one at a time and a spring pushes the staples to the front. When you push down on the arm, a metal tooth pushes the front staple down through a thin space, and the staple punches holes in the paper. Next, the pointy ends of the staple push down onto a plate, and that makes the staple bend behind the paper. And there you go, the papers are fastened. So you could say that we're sewing, but using a stapler instead of a needle. Yeah, and it works even faster. Huh? What's going on? Could it have run out of staples? There's still a lot more staples, but one of them got jammed here in the slot. Ugh. Tom Thomas, we're leaving in five minutes. Okay, Mom. So, did you get it? No. <sighs> Why don't we get Papa's to help us? Because he's really strong and he's got a pack a mat. We can do this ourselves. Tom Thomas, find something we can use to push that staple out. The stapler is not a very new invention. It's been said that the French king, King Louis XV, had a stapler made out of gold and precious gems. Unfortunately, it could only hold one staple at a time. Modern staplers are much more convenient, and people have come up with so many kinds for paper, for plywood, and even for skin. Yes, surgeons often use them during operations. Then there's the staple gun that's used to upholster furniture. And its older brother, the nail gun, can even be used to hold together the walls of a building. And here's an invention almost as important as a stapler. It's the staple remover. With its help, it's possible to remove the staples put in by a stapler. How about the screwdriver? That'll work. Look, the screwdriver fits perfectly into the slot. Ah, that's great. Now push that staple through. Only keep your fingers out of the way, or you won't finish sewing. 
Tadish! It's still not Tadish. You haven't fixed your pants yet. That's it. They're done. Now we can say, Tadish! Tom Thomas, are you ready? Of course. My idea with the stapler was smart, wasn't it? And Tom Thomas's mother won't notice a thing. Will too. Just wait till she washes them. The music box. And when the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Simka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we going to get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes going to come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> See? It's just like I told you. No more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. So you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grandpus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting out. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? Mmm, a coffee grinder? Mm, no. A hole puncher? <laughs> a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? That's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tadish! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now, don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher
wire one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band. Tie one end to a doorknob and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh. The keyboard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready, Ready or not, not, here we come. And where is he hiding this time? Tom Thomas! Yoo-hoo! Tom Thomas, you didn't forget about your grandma's birthday, did you? No! Oops, I did. We found you this time. Hey, that's not fair. It was my mom that found me, not you. Then go and hide again. Not now. I have to draw a birthday card for... Oh! My grandmother. So, we need one clean sheet of paper. When's your grandma's birthday? Tomorrow. But your card won't get there on time. Oh, then what can I do? Come on and use your noggin. Pick up the phone, give her a ring. Your grandmother will be really happy to hear your voice. No, we've got a tradition. We send each other birthday cards. And what's the internet for? Why don't you send off an electronic card to her? Simka, that's genius. Oh, this one's cool. Now go ahead and type your message. The letter D isn't working. How can I write Dear Grandma without D? Just let her be a plain old grandma without the dear. But the letter G isn't working either. It looks like we could use a pack mat here. A pack mat What for? To clean off the keyboard's contacts that got all dirty. What contacts? A key on a computer keyboard works pretty much the same way as a doorbell does. When we press on the button of a doorbell, the contacts inside touch, which lets the electricity flow that makes the bells ring. And when we press a letter on a computer keyboard, an electrical current runs from the keyboard to the computer, and that letter appears on the screen. But if there's dirt between the contacts that stops them from touching, then the current can't flow. Tom Thomas, what did you drop in here that is so sticky? It's probably the soda I was drinking. And so, you shared it with the keyboard? Here's the reason why it's not working. Where did so many crumbs come from? Uh, they fell off my sandwich. down here. That must be the sauce for my mushroom pizza. Oh, no, Lick. Well, now it looks like we're gonna be out picking mushrooms. The Fixies are always ready to help people out, but there are some people we really don't feel like helping. I remember when I was working as a Fixie back in one house. It was a disaster. One day, the owner spilled coffee on the remote for the TV. As I was running to clean the remote, he starts pounding the TV with his fist because the channels won't change. So now the TV is broken, too. Well, with no TV, he decides to listen to some music, and he carelessly pulls the music center onto the floor. So he tries to fix that himself and manages to break it for good. And then he sits down on top of his telephone and breaks that to bits. Meanwhile, I'm still busy trying to clean the coffee off of the remote. There wasn't a minute of rest with this guy around. In the end, I couldn't take it any longer. So I got out of there, and now I'm here, teaching kids. Tom Thomas, what do you 
Thomas, why are you eating food at your computer? Yeah, they don't feed you in the kitchen or something? <sighs> now I know it. It's not allowed. You said it. Now write your message. And write the address on there, too. Uh-huh. Mom, do you know what the email address for Grandma is? Grandma doesn't have an email address. So what? We went ahead and fixed that keyboard for nothing? I still need it. And my grandma? I'll give her a ring on the phone. You said you had a tradition of writing each other cards. And what? Grandma will be happy to hear my voice. That's some original idea, huh? <laughs> The Magnet. Well, it looks like we need a pack of that. Hmm, where did this screw come from? another look in the kitchen. But we already looked in there. We'll look better this time. Let's go take a look in there. We looked so many times already. Simka Nolik, what do you keep searching for in here? It's not a what, it's a who. Our papoose is missing. We've been looking for him everywhere. Oh, no. He's probably already turned into a screw, because huh? he doesn't have enough energy. Maybe I could help. Surely. Let's start with you picking us up. We're just exhausted from running. In a dangerous situation, a fixie can choose to turn into a screw. But sometimes it happens all by itself. For example, when a fixie doesn't have enough energy. When this happens, the fixie grows weak, gets sluggish, and then goes into hibernation, turning into a screw. This bad luck happens when a fixie doesn't get charged up from being inside of a device. That's why fixies always work inside of machines, so they can stay charged up with energy. Sometimes a fixie that has grown weak and turned into a screw can get lucky. If a human happens to find him and screws him into an appliance, then the fixie will be able to get energized and come back to life. Then he'll unscrew himself and run away, leaving the human wondering, where did that screw go? I know I screwed it in. So, where should we look first? What are you looking for in here, Tom Thomas? Well, um... And what do you have there in your hand? Well, uh, just some screws of mine. Ah, I just found a screw not too long ago. Maybe it's one of yours. Probably. Where is it now? Here, take it, and don't leave them lying around. Should I turn myself around now so your papoose can turn back into himself? He's been lying in there for a week already. He doesn't have the energy to turn back into himself. Then what's next? We have to screw him into some device, you know, so he will get his energy back. Okay. But which one's Papus? All of these screws in here look like Papus. We'll use a magnet. How come? All the screws will just get lifted up together. First of all, not every. Not every kind of metal is attracted by a magnet. It's an easy thing to see for yourself. Just get a magnet. You probably have one in your house on the refrigerator. Try moving it close to different metal objects you have around the house like a spoon or nails or coins. You'll notice that some of the metal objects are pulled very strongly by the magnet, while some of the metals are pulled a bit less. 
And then there will be some metal things that aren't attracted to the magnet at all. Got it. And the second thing? Well, the second thing, we fixies aren't attracted to that magnet one bit when we turn into screws. Let's give it a try. Here, I found him. And now we'll screw him in. I wonder, are there any other fixies in here? We're not enough for you or something? Not at all, I just wonder. Nothing. Oh, and the screw went away. How about that? He already got charged up and unscrewed himself. Why don't you take a little rest after such a big adventure? No, thanks. I've had plenty of rest. Anyway, it's something I've wanted to do for a very long time already. The thermometer. I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Hey, did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm gonna pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? Mercury is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom Thomas, you're a genius! But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <coughs> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. With the temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait. Looks like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. Ah. 
and never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. And what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Papu said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think you'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? The aquarium. The coast is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Masia, why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty, and it needs air. But the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die. Right. First, I'll fix that light, while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too. You're too small for this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're a giant. I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing. Nolik, let's go. Well, let's check it. Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. Masia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water, but also add air to it, so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us. of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water, and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water, and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. The diver got air from a hose that started above the water. 
This let the diver spend a long time under the water, and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks, so they can swim freely, and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on, and the filter is working. And the fish look so exciting! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack a mat Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth. They must be so hungry. You're right, they're hungry. Nolik, come on! Those fish, they're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. Whoop. <gasps> oh, gee. Hold it. Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? As long as you're not thinking that food is me. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the spare part. Hey, what's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a Sorry, problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pacamats. Papus and Masio went out to visit our Fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. Ever since he was a boy, Papus dreamed of going into space. Then why not? Fixie's work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the Astronaut Training Center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papus trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late, and the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off, but he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part burned out. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> Nolik! Genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the paths. Pull it! Uh, uh, Tom Thomas! Tidish! Hooray! It works again! Tom Thomas, I'm about to start the dishwasher. Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down! 
Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. Nolan, follow me. Inside the TV's the same part. Now back to the dishwasher. <sighs> we barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, hon. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry. Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then we put the part back into the computer and it started working again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. That old thing hasn't been working for years. Masia and I have pulled out half of those parts already. The fan. Pass them on the left. Step on it. Now pass them on the right. Look out for the wall. Hit the brakes. Why didn't you hit the brakes? He was just too scared. What do you mean too scared? Something got into my eyes. Those were your hands. My turn. Let me show you how it's really done. Oh, what's wrong with the computer? Oh, it's been really acting up for a while. It turns off by itself. It's no big deal. I just turn it back on. I don't like this at all. Come on, Nola. Let's go inside and take a look. Just like people, machines can get sick, too. They can get a very high temperature and even start coughing and sneezing. And if a machine or an appliance gets seriously sick, sometimes it can be too late to fix them at all. So wouldn't it be better if we could keep them from getting sick in the first place? Everybody knows that people who look after their health get sick less often and live longer. And the same goes for machines. Machines break less often and live longer if they're properly taken care of. That's why machines need to be checked from time to time and cleaned and oiled. And that's what's called preventive maintenance. And preventive maintenance is something that always should be kept in mind by humans and by fixies. Oh, what is that? What is what? Can you hear that? What are all those sounds? It's probably just mm, a fixie eater that woke up. What? What do you mean, fixie eater? Didn't you know that inside of some appliances there live horrible monsters? They love to attack fixies and eat them up. And the smaller the fixies are, the more the fixie eater likes to eat them. Ha <laughs> ha! And how come you never told me anything about fixie eaters before? I didn't want you to get scared. <laughs> All right, scaredy cat, let's keep going.
Malik, it needs our help. See how sick that fan is? Let's go and get it working right now. A computer can only run when all of its parts are working. And even though a fan looks like nothing more than a simple little engine with a propeller, the computer couldn't work without it. It has the very important job of keeping all of those other parts cool when they start heating up. It cools down the inside of a computer by blowing a stream of air. But if the fan gets dirty and starts working poorly, the computer might get overheated and turn off. Or it can simply break. You have to turn off your computer. How come? I'll tell you later. Part's done. Now we oil it. Let me try. All right. It's oiled up. <laughs> Just like your nose. Tom Thomas! Turn, Turn it on! Titty! And then suddenly, I hear this terrible roar of a fixator. But I wasn't scared one little bit. And I just ran right into the battle. And Simka? Oh, she was hiding somewhere. You know, she's a girl and they're all cowards. So I had to fight the monster all by myself. Ah! Oh, I guess that was an example of how girls hide like cowards when they're too scared. <laughs> well, um, yeah. The Short Circuit. Are you sure we're allowed to play in your dad's office? We're not gonna play in here. We came here on a tour. I think this place is like a real museum. Just take a look at that. I have no idea what it is. And this thing is a complete mystery. <laughs> Keep it down, this is a museum, you know? <laughs> what a great museum guide you are. You know absolutely nothing. How can you say you don't know? I know. I'd like to run a test here, on the capacitor. On this one? Don't, Don't touch. touch! Why can't I? It's not a museum. Because it's dangerous. If you touch it, the shock could be deadly. But you two are touching it all the time. I've seen it. The only time is when the device is turned off. And right now, the device is running. For many centuries, the Fixies only had to work on mechanical devices. But after the discovery of electricity, the Fixies had to master electrical devices as well. At first, Fixies were getting terrible shocks, and they really, really hurt. Over time, the Fixies figured out that you can't fix appliances when they're turned on, and bare wires should never, ever be touched. And Fixies also learned that electricity can travel not just through wires, but through plain old water. So that's why if a broken wire ever ends up in a puddle of water, you must never get close to it, or you could get a terrible shock. Fixies learn all these important rules, and they hope humans understand that they need to learn them as well. Look, now here's one I know about. It's an old radio my dad got for my grandpa. More than 60 years old, can you believe it? <laughs> Your grandpa? <laughs> the old radio. That was a joke. Is it still working? I don't know. Let's check. Electricity got turned off. Maybe it was a short circuit. I'll go find out. <sighs> oh, so it was you who caused the short circuit. I was in here showing all these things to Nolik, and we wanted to turn on on the radio. We flipped the switch on, and then suddenly, kaboom, the lights go off. They're off <sighs> everywhere in the apartment. So then how can I even warm up my pizza now? Soon it will warm up all by itself, now that the refrigerator isn't working. Simka, uh, what is that thing you said? A short circuit. 
Electricity goes back and forth from an appliance with two separate wires. For example, an iron uses the electricity it needs to get hot. But if those two wires start touching each other without the iron in the middle, then the wires will get hot instead. And this can cause the wires to burn out. When this happens, it's called a short circuit. Short circuits can happen when the coating around a wire is worn out or when an appliance is broken on the inside of it. So when you tried turning on that old broken radio, the wires in the apartment started burning. Does that mean all the wires got destroyed? Don't worry. In our apartment, there's an automatic switch to stop that. It turns off the electricity when the wires start getting too hot. Oof. And what about that, uh, uh, automatic switch? Is that something you need your mom and dad to turn on? No question. You definitely would. But you have us. Yeah. And we have Papus and Masia. I'll go tell them what happened here. And you guys, you turn off the radio. But we'll get electrocuted. What do you mean, electrocuted? Thanks to you, there's no electricity. Are you ready? Pull it up! Hooray! Tadish! So, Tom Thomas, what are we doing next? Hmm, why don't we continue with our tour? Hey, wait for me! I'm coming! Hey, wait! I thought you were fixing the television with Papus and Masia. They asked me to come here and stay with you on your awesome museum tour. That way, there'll be less for them to fix in here later. The washing machine. Look at that, Simka. They're showing Titanic on the television. Hey, Nolik. That's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nola, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas' mother. She's got headphones on, we're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. Just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! <laughs> Who's here? Hello? to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. 
Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer, too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way! And three! Pull it! Huh? What is that? <gasps> oh my goodness! Sweet little baby, how did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan, run! <laughs> the pen. Not here either. Tom Thomas, are you looking for me? Huh. No, for a red pen. I need it right now. What do you need it for? Here, look what my teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you gonna do with a red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. oh, wow. Good catch. So, what do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's. And then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See, no problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah, then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen, it's more like a pen knife. Oh, look, the ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack of mat there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. Nah, that's 
That's not it. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable. Except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. Is this the one? You're right. That's it. Don't you just see how awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, help us. What do you need the red pen for? Well, Tom Thomas and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, I wouldn't have helped you out. So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behave badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? The flashlight. Where is that thing? Hi, Tom Thomas. What are you looking for? The flashlight. Ah, here it is. Why do you need it? Katya, I want to talk with her. Why not use the phone? This thing's a flashlight. It's not a telephone. No, you don't understand. Me and Katya came up with a secret code. If I flash just once, then it means, hello there. Oh, and Katya's also said hello there to you. And two flashes? What's that? Katya's asking if everything's all right. Now I'll tell her that everything's good. Oh, what's wrong with this? Right. I see, Nolik. But what's wrong? Any flashlight is nothing more than a battery and a light bulb connected by some wires that are used to make a switch in between them. To turn on a flashlight, you flip on a switch. That lets the electricity flow through the wires from the battery to the bulb so it lights up. And if it won't light up, that means that the battery is dead, the light bulb is burned out, or the switch is broken. And now, let's put all this theory into practice. I'm sorry, but I don't have time right now. Don't you get it? If I don't signal back, she'll think that I don't want to talk to her. And that would just be terrible. Just don't get all worked up. We'll help you. But first, we need to get the Mac up. Uh, uh, um, the pack mac And come right back. See ya. Did you hear that? Masya, what a weird sound. Uh-huh. That's new. <laughs> now we know what the noise was. <sighs> Papus, can we use a pack a mat to fix a flashlight? Really, did you say a flashlight? <laughs> Do you know the story about when Granddad had to travel for miles on top of a dog? It's true! He was sent on a very important mission. A huge flashlight repair. What kind was it? A special kind called a lighthouse. 
A lighthouse is a tall structure with a huge flashlight on top of it that is used to help ships and planes find their way. People have been using lighthouses since ancient times. The most famous of them all is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It was built in Egypt more than 2,000 years ago, and it was more than 100 meters tall. The ancient Greeks considered this lighthouse one of the seven wonders of the world. In ancient times, people would burn big fires on top of lighthouses. Today, the light comes from powerful electric bulbs. Many of today's lighthouses not only give off light, but they send radio signals, too. Yes, thanks to lighthouses, ships and planes for miles around learn where they need to sail or where they've got to fly in order to stay safe. And thanks to that heroic deed of your grandfather, that big old lighthouse started working. Since then, not a single ship has ever gone astray. Simka! And what if we don't just fix the flashlight, but we do something heroic? Like Grandpus did. Uh-huh. All right, what do you say? Let's jump on the back of this dog and get moving. Stop ducking. Whoa. Grab hold of my hand. Uh-oh. Uh Chusaka, no! Get out right now! <sighs> Tanish! <laughs> that was really some heroic deed! Now it's time to go get that lighthouse fixed. Tom Thomas, hand the lighthouse over. What kind of lighthouse? The one that's your flashlight. Uh, I have no use for it. What do you mean, no use for it? But then how are you gonna tell Katya what she needs to know? I already told her. Watch this. No, that wasn't the deal. Yeah. You want to tell us our heroic deed was in vain? Well, if you need some heroic deed, then sure, fix it. Hooray! Hooray! The compass. Pipe ball, hands on the deck. Aye, aye, mateys. Shiver me timbers. Simka Nolik, what you doing here? We're not Simka Nolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean no? No hooray? Oh, yeah. You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it, but how? with a map, and it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh, from here you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on, but where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the North Magnetic Pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the South. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. 
How to what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north, and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window. So that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right, then. North we go. First, head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy! Monster on the horizon! Let him do it himself. He... <laughs> hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly! I counted on myself! Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go... One, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes, it's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south 600 paces. Six for you, matey. 